Hi, this deck of cards was compiled to facilitate working through the MCAT style passage. Somatosensory effects of Temple Grandin squeeze box on hypersensitivity. Okay, and this hypersensitivity is referring to hypersensitivity to any type of outside stimulus, whether touch, sight. So basically, the content covered is going to deal with a little bit of psychological and a lot of bit of the biological foundations of behavior. All right. The Ruffini cylinder fires to C blank pressure. So what type of stimulus does the Ruffini cylinder fire to? That would be constant pressure, okay? And here we see a Ruffini cylinder. And so they will start to fire, not if you get a poke. If you're poked and the pressure is constant, and this firing will send um, some type of afferent signal to your central nervous system, okay? The Merkel receptor fires to C blank pressure. I think by now you should know the answer, but I'll give you a moment to think. Again, that's constant, and here goes an image of Merkel receptors. They're also known as Merkel discs. Okay, here they go. Right beneath um, the, you know, the exterior or epidermal layer. Okay. So just note that Merkel discs are lodged at the intersection between the epidermis and the dermis. Both the M blank R corpuscle and the P blank N corpuscle fire when pressure is first applied and again when pressure is released. So what type of um, Corpuscles respond to this type of um, stimulation. I'll give you a moment to think. This would be the Meissner corpuscle and the Pacinian corpuscle. So here goes an image of the Meissner. Okay. So they're also large, lodged at the interface between the epidermis and the dermis layer. And here goes um, the Pacinian corpuscle, and it's lodged deeper within the dermal layer. So I'll give you a moment to just take in this visual. N Blank N is the perception of pain. So what do we call the perception of pain? I'll give you a moment to think. That would be nociception. And here goes a really simple breakdown of how we feel pain. So here goes the, you know, free nerve ending of the nociceptor similar to the ones that I just showed you, and they're afferent, so they send signals from the skin to the central nervous system. Let's say you hammered your finger for whatever reason because you're trying to like do some type of do-it-yourself um, project, and then your brain is going to respond with an ouch and removal of your finger from the situation. Please don't ever do this. It's so painful. I once stepped on a nail and didn't realize it until I had to yank it out. It was just, I was just glad that I wasn't bleeding out. It was horrible. K. 
K blank A is the sense of movement. What is this phenomenon? So kinesthesia is the sense of movement, and she definitely has a good sense of kinesthesia. This is my favorite ballerina, Misty Copeland. She's the first African-American prima ballerina from the American Ballet Theater, the leading dance company in the country. So I just wanted to showcase her. This was this year, 2015, is when she received that honor. Okay. P blank N is the sense of position and balance. So what is the sense of position and balance? That would be proprioception. And people who practice yoga, <laughs> thought this was really cool, definitely develop a good sense of proprioception. Anyone who practices something involving balance will develop a very extremely good sense of proprioception. Okay? Proprioception. I have trouble pronouncing this word. Adaptation requires a C blank T stimulus. So in order to adapt to a stimulus, what is required? Again, that stimulus has to be constant. Like, you know when someone releases a really, um, I don't know, potent fart, and after like a few seconds you get accustomed to the smell almost as if it's not there that's because there's a constant whiff of gas molecules interacting um, with your sense of smell so that's like a an example and this is you know that got a guy like responding to this type of situation after a while he will get used to the funky odor that he's smelling Okay, now here goes a little bit of statistics. The box of a box, box and whisker plot shows the I blank R, Q blank E range. So what is this range called? I get, I'll give you a moment to think, and if you don't know it, you just won't know it. So I'll give you a quick rundown. That would be the interquartile range. And so here goes a few different box and whisker plots. And the the horizontal lines represent um, the median, the middle number. So the best example I can give you is the number 15. Let's say each of these represent data sets and there's 15 values in those data sets. Um, this line, would represent the eighth value. So half of the data values lie to the um, above the, me the median and half lie below the median. And so the interquartile range or Q1 for the first um, extreme is going to be the, the point halfway between the first data value and the median. And so let's see, that would be the fourth data value. And then um, on the top side, you would go four data values up to get right here to Q3. Okay, and that would represent the other like midpoint of the second half of data. And so these are like the middle 50% of the data. I know that was really rushed. But don't worry, I'm going to release some flashcards on basic statistics. Okay, so don't get a hissy fit. 